I have a problem here that asks us to find a matrix Q theta such that when you multiply in a pair of coordinates A and B it gives you the reflection of that set of coordinates A and B across the line y equals the tangent of theta times x. So I have a graph here that shows this. So if we have a point u, if we apply q theta, it should give us the reflection across this green line, which is y equals the tangent of x times sorry, the tangent of theta times x. A quick note about the equation tangent of theta times x, it looks like it might be really menacing or complex, but because of the way the tangent function works, with as approaching as you approach 90 degrees, the tangent, of func the tangent function explodes to infinity. Because of that property, this line will actually have an angle to, with the x-axis of exactly theta degrees, which is going to end up being very useful in this problem. So, this is this is going to require some matrices, right? We're, we're working with matrices here. We're trying to find a matrix. That's going to be our final answer. And when you're working with matrices, a lot of times it can be useful to think about how you can bend your problem, which in our case is reflecting across a line. That might seem daunting, but what if we could bend, change, what if we could rotate our problem into something that we do know how to solve? And in this case, Rotation is the right way to go. So what we can do is we can apply a rotation matrix, which is a tool that we have, I have a video on from before. What it'll do is it'll rotate all of the points here by an angle theta. We can apply that with negative theta. So we can apply the rotation matrix of negative theta. What will that do? Why is that useful? Well if you rotate this line y equals tangent of x by negative theta if it makes an angle of theta to the x-axis that means it's going to cancel out all of that angle so you're going to be left with just the x-axis here it's going to be your new line and why is that useful well if you're trying to reflect a point across the x-axis well that's a problem that we know how to solve if this is a pair of points a and b then reflecting across the x-axis doesn't change the x, but it makes the b, the y-coordinate, go negative. So a, b goes to a, negative b. So if we could find a way to rotate our point u so that we're then reflecting across the x-axis instead of this line y equals the tangent of x, uh, tangent of theta times x, if we could find a way to rotate it to that point to make our problem easier, we could then solve that problem, and then we could rotate that answer, a, negative b, back by theta. So we can apply apply our negative theta, so rotate everything by negative theta to make the line the x-axis, then reflect, and this is going to be the easy way to solve our problem, and finally we're going to apply our positive theta just to get back to where we were originally. And this the simple solution after applying our negative theta, once we rotate it by r theta, it's going to be the same as the solution to the hard problem that we were trying to solve before, which is reflecting across y equals the tangent of x. We rotate everything by negative theta so that we get an easier problem. So let's do that now. If you need a refresher on the rotation matrix, you can watch the other video on this channel about it. Uh, I'm going to assume that you know what it is. So. The rotation matrix R theta is the matrix cosine of theta, sine of theta, negative sine of theta, and cosine of theta. And the negative rotation matrix R negative theta, if we are remembering our even odd identities, cosine will stay the same when you put negative theta into it signs will become negative, so the positive sign will become negative sine of theta, the negative sign will become positive sine of theta, and the cosine, again, will just stay the same. So with all of this in place, we can just say let u equal some matrix AB, and 
we can get multiplying here. So let's scroll down a little bit, but let's keep our plan on the board for now at least. And let's write this out. So first things first, we want to multiply u by r negative theta so that we're getting this easy u, which is the same as going to be reflecting across the x-axis. So u is a, b, and we're trying to multiply this by r negative theta. So I'm going to write r negative theta here. So cosine of theta, negative sine of theta, sine of theta, and cosine of theta. And when we multiply these, what are we going to get? Well, a multiplies by cosine of theta, so you get a cosine of theta, and then negative a sine of theta. And then here you have plus b sine of theta plus b cosine of theta. So this is this point right here. But this isn't actually the reflection yet, so we have to do our next step is to actually reflect it. But luckily for us, we just rotated it, so the reflection is easy. The reflected version of this is just the x-coordinate staying the same, because reflecting across the x-axis does not affect the x-coordinate. And then making the y-coordinate negative. So this becomes then a sine of theta minus b cosine of theta. And now that we have this reflected point, all we have to do is rotate it by theta again to get back to our old frame of reference where this reflected point will be the solution to reflecting across the original line. So let's do that. So I'm going to copy this to make it simple. We're going to multiply this here by the regular old rotation matrix. So cosine of theta, sine of theta, negative sine of theta and cosine of theta. What happens when we multiply this? Well, we're going to get a long answer. So we may have to, I'm going to just scroll down and actually going to do it here just so we have space for everything. So let's do it nice and long. First we have the x times the cosine of theta. So we have a and then cosine of theta times cosine of theta is just a cosine squared of theta. And then plus b sine of theta times cosine of theta. So b sine of theta times cosine of theta. And then here we have the x times the other x here. So minus and then a cosine of theta times the sine of theta here. Multiplying it by negative sine of theta. And then minus b sine squared of theta. All right, so that's the x. Now we're going to do the same thing for the y. So we have a and then we're holding it by sine theta, so a sine squared of theta minus b cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And then we do it now multiplying by cosine. So we're going to say plus a sine of theta times the cosine of theta minus b times the cosine squared of theta. And oh, as it seems I've made a slight error in my matrix calculation, it's a good lesson that in math, sometimes you don't get it right the first time. But if you look at your stuff, I just paused for about 10 minutes trying to figure out what was wrong, because I knew this didn't look right. I figured it out. I multiplied the x component times the x here and then the y. I should have done a cosine of theta plus b sine of theta times this and then this, so the top would have been different. So let's just get rid of this and redo that calculation to make it correct. Try to do this. OK. This time, I will pay a little bit more attention. So we have, again, the same thing for the start. So a cosine squared of theta, a cosine squared of theta plus, or minus actually, uh, no, sorry, I'm losing my mind on the matrices here, uh, plus b sine of theta cosine of theta. And here, though, we're going to take this x into the uh, y component of the x, because in matrix calculations, you have to consider that an x component might turn into a y component in a transformation. So we're going to say a cosine of theta 
times sine of theta, so a cosine of theta sine of theta plus b sine squared of theta. All right, that's really good now. And here, finally, we say the y times negative sine of theta, so negative a sine squared of theta. And then we have uh, plus b cosine of theta sine of theta. And here we have plus down here a cosine of theta sine of theta minus b cosine squared of theta. This looks much more correct to me now. Because now what we can do, and I'm scrolling over here a bit because we're going to need quite a bit of room for this. Now what we can do is we can say, hey, I see some simplifications that I can make. This a here, we can factor out. And the b's, we can also factor out. We're going to get something really nice. So the a, we factor it out, and we get a times the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. And we factor out the b's to get b times, and then here we have b times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Here we have b times, it's in a different order, but sine of theta times cosine of theta. So this is the same as b times 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. And then if we go down here, we can do a very similar thing. So we're going to have a times 2 cosine of theta sine of theta down here and then plus b times sine squared of theta minus cosine squared of theta. Sine squared of theta minus, and just going to do a little bit more scrolling here, sine squared of theta minus cosine squared of theta. And now that we have this, we can start to remember some of our trigonometric identities, specifically the double angle identities. So. If you recall, we have the identity that the sine of 2 times an angle theta equals 2 times the cosine of the original angle times the sine of the original angle. And we see that expression pop up twice here. So this is definitely going to be useful for us. And we also know that the cosine of 2 times theta, this has its own identity. This is the cosine squared of theta minus the sine squared of theta. And we see that popping up here. And we also see it popping up here. It's just multiplied by negative 1. So what we could do is we could say change this plus sign here into a minus sign and then distribute so we're, we're multiplying by negative 1 on the outside of the parentheses. In parentheses, we're multiplying by negative 1 inside. And now, if we were to rearrange, it'd be cosine squared minus sine squared of theta. So we also see the cosine double angle identity here. So this is shaping up to be a really nice simplification here. Let's just take it the last step and uh, substitute in these, these double angle identities. So we have a times this is the cosine of 2 theta, a times the cosine of 2 theta, and then plus b, that's the sine of 2 theta. And now we have a times the sine of 2 theta minus b times, and then this cosine squared minus sine squared, and we did the minus so that we could get it in the correct form, minus b times the cosine of 2 theta. And this is the final matrix. It's not so much a matrix that you'd multiply in to get your number, but that once you've multiplied that q theta matrix that we we're talking about by a, b, then you'll get this. And if you wanted to extract the actual matrix q of theta, that would be pretty easy because you see here we have a column of a's and a column of b's. So what we could do is we could say that q theta here equals, we just take out the a's and b's, and you get the cosine of 
2 theta plus the sine of 2 theta and then the sine of 2 theta minus the cosine of 2 theta. I find it really interesting that this Q theta matrix, it looks a lot like the rotation matrix, except that there's no negative on the sines. The negative actually falls to the cosine because of how we did our, uh, our multiplication, uh, how we took the negative of the y coordinate over the x axis. And this, this actually isn't quite it. Uh, you don't have uh, this plus sign. These are uh, four separate terms, so I, I can make the minus sign a little smaller. This is a two by two matrix now. Uh, and the reason is because if you were to multiply q theta by a b, you would just get back the matrix that we have here. That would equal this um, with with the a's and b's because of the way that matrix multiplication works. So that is how to solve it. It's cool how such a long expression simplifies down. You can think about why is it that you get all of these two thetas. What is special about two theta that lends itself nicely to reflection? But that is the solution to what is the reflection matrix.